Hi, welcome back to what is, I think, the sixth in a series of videos. I'm teaching you how to find, fix, and rent uh, a, your way to a property empire. Um, importantly, using the same capital pot that average man or woman on the street would use to buy one or two properties and rinse and repeating and um, buying multiple properties from one capital pot, building your property empire. Um, if you enjoy this video, by the way, if you would subscribe and give us the thumbs up, it really helps. Thank you very much. If you've watched the previous videos, you'll see what we're trying, trying to achieve, what I'm talking about using that same capital pot. If you haven't, and you're completely none the wiser, you're tuning in just to find out how to rent, uh, rent a property out, then perhaps go back and watch those previous videos. They're all in a playlist, so it should be relatively easy to find them. Uh, also make sure you download all the free giveaways. There's some um, sort of calculating sheets, uh, viewing sheets, loads of giveaways and, and, and whatnot there. So it, once you watch the video, it'll tell you where to find them and all the links and whatnot. So, uh, But today I'm assuming you have found and fixed a property like the rest of the video series uh, teaches you to do. And now it's time to rent it out. Landlords are a little bit polarised when it comes to this subject that I, I, I find. Um, the idea of renting out a property to some would-be landlords is enough to put them off completely. The idea of the hassle, the uncertainty, um, it becomes an all-consuming worry, enough to actually stop some people becoming landlords. Um, I think an equal number of landlords uh, invest in a property without really considering um, anywhere near enough the the thing that you, essentially you're going to be left with for um, the long term, you know, it might, might be very exciting the idea of finding and fixing a house and it becomes all consuming for the uh, sort of two, three, four, six months that you're doing it. It's a very exciting project for many people. And then you're re left to rent the property out for the next 30 years, let's say. And actually, it is the most important bit. In many ways, you, you almost want it to be a non-event. Uh, but the way to think about that, is, or the way to achieve that, is to think about it a lot. You don't just forget about it. It's, it's very nice when a portfolio just sits there and, and runs without any um, thought or much input. But to achieve, achieve that, you've got to put, put a lot of thought in up front. So somewhere in the middle of those two views, I find a minority of landlords, I must say it's a minority, um, who get it right. Um, let's talk about how we achieve that, how we get things right. Whenever I rent a property out, whenever we rent a property out as a, as a business, um, there are what we call three lines of defense before we rent the property, before we allow a tenant to move in. And once the tenant moves in, there are further three focuses. So quite nice and easy to remember. The defense is this. Um, the first one is it's you. It's you as a landlord. Uh, you've got the right idea. You've got the right property in the right area you're engaged with the idea of being a landlord. You know, there's plenty of landlords just have a go. Um, it could be anything that you're doing um, and you're not really committed to the idea of providing a decent and safe home for someone to live in, which is at the end of the day is what you're doing. If you come at it with the right attitude and you've got the right property presented in the right way, then you're a good landlord and good landlords deserve good renters. It's as simple as that. And bad landlords don't. So the first line of defense is actually you and the way you present the house and deserving a good tenant, number one. Number two is you choose a good tenant just because you deserve one. If you don't put some barriers in place, um, then there's no guarantee that you'll get a good um, tenant at all. One of the myths that I like to regularly debunk and I tell it by telling a story of um, landlords that I know have got properties on streets near or you know, even on the same street as I have have conversations with local landlords and they bemoan you know, the bad tenant, the bad area, the bad house. Um, it's a complete myth that um, you know, a good house gets a good tenant, a, 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 a bad area gets a, a, a bad tenant, or all of those things. You, It's nothing to do with the area. You can have a good house in an area that is whatever the area is and attract a good tenant. Just because you've got a million pound house in Mayfair doesn't guarantee you a good tenant 
at all. That's what I'm saying. If you do the, a, a decent, everything's relative, of course, the rent levels are all, all, all relative. If you have a decent standard of home in any area, and then of course there are areas that we don't buy in and we've covered those off in previous videos, um, and you deserve a good tenant, you can always find a good tenant. You've just got to find them. The analogy I give is the bad landlord with the not good, the, the bad house on the same street, there's 10 people lining up outside, uh, outside their house to, to rent it. Um, outside my house, the good house, but on the same street are 11 people. And the key thing is, 10 of those people are the same people that's queuing up outside the bad house. Um, the trick is to choose the one, and it does take that much time and effort. Those, that ratio is probably about right, I'll be honest. Um, so referencing, uh, all of our land, all of our tenants need to earn at least £18,000 a year. If they don't work, they have to have a guarantor that earns £23,000. The acid test of referencing is, can I get insurance on it? Can I get rent and legal protection on it? If you can't, it's not proper uh, referencing. So. Um, Second line of defense, referencing. Third line of defense is what I like to call perfect paperwork. I like a bit of alliteration, so perfect paperwork. There are dozens and dozens of things that you need to get right, literally almost, almost two dozen um, bits of paper or actions you need to take when you wrap a tenancy up and move a tenant in, whether it's prescribed information or you know, a a ASTs, EPCs, GSCs, all these things, uh, now electrical certificates. Um, a bad landlord will moan about all that administrative burden and push back against it. A good landlord will just get on and do it. And a bad landlord will then come unstuck six months, 12 months down the line when something's wrong and they can't evict. A good landlord won't have those problems. So as simple as that, you either do it or you're storing up problems for the future. Um, it's your choice. Um, never bemoan the, the workload uh, we've already discussed this is the best thing you could possibly do and it's the best it's the best wealth creation strategy on planet earth it's worth a little bit of hassle all that hassle is designed to get rid of the uh, the not so bothered rogue landlords and that leaves more room for a good operator to be profitable actually so embrace it there are your three lines of defense um, then your tenant moves in you have no more defense at that point let's be clear they're in so now it's about management and there are three focuses. Uh, if you ask any landlord, what are you interested in with a, when, a, when a tenant's in a property? They'll say, I want my money and I want the property looked after. And they are two of the focuses. But the number one focus, and it's um, something you really need to get your head around if you're not immediately thinking this, is look after the renter, the person that's living in your home. Um, every single conversation that you may have with your renter will run smoothly if you've got their experience in the front of your mind. Now, I'm not talking about being soft. Um, I think you get that impression that we're not soft, um, but I am talking about listening to them and keeping on the right side and keeping the lines of communication open. Don't shy away from tough conversations if they need to happen, but that tough conversation always runs smoother if you have had good communication up to that point and you're generally keeping the tenant looked after as, as your side of the bargain. Yeah. So number one, look after the renter. That's a focus for sure. Number two, collect the rent. Um, in my property portfolio, I have a, I'll say an incredibly uh, low level of arrears. I get to see other property portfolios. Um, we are, we, as, as a business, I buy other businesses. So we get to look under the bonnet and see what other arrears levels are. Uh, we also recruit other people that work for other businesses and I've got friends who are also landlords and I have a tenth of the arrears that I would say the average landlord has and the process is really simple. Um, we check the bank every day, sounds silly but we do and lots of people don't. Uh, if the rent doesn't get paid the very next day a process kicks in and it is the very next day if you don't call the tenant for two or three days after they miss the rent, what are you really saying to them? I'm not that bothered that you didn't pay the rent. You call them at 8.30 on the morning after they didn't pay the rent the next day and ask them why. Um, you ask them for their long card number and they really need to make a payment now, please. Within seven days, we'll have had seven contacts with a non-paying renter and the seventh one of those would actually be a knock at the door because maybe they've gone. After seven days, we serve a notice of intention and 21 more days after that seventh day, 
we are serving notice. It's as simple as that. Now, number one still applies. We're still talking to the renter all the time. And yes, there might be a nice story behind this and we're sorry to hear that. And I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the, the rent payment on the 17th or whatever it will be. But yes, I am still serving the notice. You understand why I must do that. And we're keeping, we're sticking to the process. There is no sob story that will stop us carrying on the process. That's just to protect ourselves. On the 28th day, if that doesn't come through, seven plus 21 is 28, one calendar month. That's your maximum arrears will tolerate. And then we're serving notice. That's how we get incredibly low arrears. You're starting from the top, I have to say, you know, decent and safe home, referencing right, perfect paperwork, keeping the renter informed. You can see how then having a conversation underneath all those layers of good practice means that this happens very, very infrequently. So you're not actually having to deal with many problems at all. The next thing that any landlord will want to achieve is to make sure that the property is looked after. You know, is the tenant looking after the property? And um, I have to say that's relatively simple as well. Again, number one, get good tenants in there, communicate well with them. Then take a photographic inventory, must be photographic these days, uh, do regular inspections and do a photographic checkout. That will ensure that everything is looked after. You might want to consider one of the alternative deposit schemes. They have, offer a higher level of um, uh, security, do, um, pay, pay out essentially. You know, at the moment, deposits are capped at uh, a number of weeks and the, uh, the deposits tend to pay out, the deposit schemes pay out higher amounts. We found those to be quite useful in the event of actually having a claim. Um, it's interesting to note actually that every single downside that you can think of as a landlord, going back to those two groups, the people, some people think about it too much, some people don't think about it enough. People who think about it too much, every single downside can be assured against, insured against. Um, you can get rent and legal protection. Of course, the house is insured against burning down. Um, if you bought the wrong house and a great big crack goes through, uh, comes through it, you can go back to the surveyor and say, why did you let me buy this house? You know, that's, that, that's a big worry in my landlord's heads. Rent and legal insurance is, is something that, that, that's easy to do. Boiler, breakdown care, plumbing, those kind of things, that can all be uh, insured against as well. I'll tell you now that as soon as you've got five, 10 properties, you're gonna start thinking seriously about the, the boiler care and those kind of things because they just don't happen very often. It might seem cheap and it is relatively cheap, particularly important maybe if you've got one, two, three, five properties. But as soon as you get more than that, it, 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 you can self-insure that. Uh, as soon as you get more than 20, 30 properties, you probably won't want rent and legal insurance either, or you might, particularly in this climate. I know some landlords are wanting to as well, but uh, um, it's, it's worth knowing. All the downsides, all those worries, they can be insured against. Now, finally, my last bit of advice is, um, is, is get some help. Um, this is far too involved a job for one person to manage. The one thing that's absolutely true, a fact, is that any person can buy a house and rent it out badly. You can all have a go. I can have a go. Anybody can have a go. Uh, if you put in a lot of time and effort, you might even do half a decent job of it. Um, but you'll definitely, definitely miss something. Um, that's just a fact. Uh, I can speak from experience. I'll tell you about my experiences in a minute. Um, perhaps the thing that you miss doesn't really matter. You know, Maybe, maybe you just missed a, a rent increase. Maybe you missed a month's rent and... Some, something something went awry, but it didn't really just cost you some money. Maybe you missed some paperwork, um, but nobody noticed, so you got away with it. Maybe until you didn't. Um, perhaps uh, you you miss a tenant notice, and you didn't proactively remarket the property, so you got a two or three month void. I've seen that happen as well. Uh, perhaps you don't main, you know, handle a maintenance issue right, so you, know, you get any environmental health officer coming around and they slap some notices on it and it costs you money, it's all a bit uh, uh, embarrassing and a lot of hassle, honestly. Um, perhaps you miss getting the, the license of the property. Maybe you think, I don't want to get a license, you know, um, and at that point your tenant decides they don't want to pay the rent and you can't kick them out because you haven't got a license. I've seen that happen as well. Um, you know, Perhaps it's something more serious. Perhaps you forget a gas certificate and you end up in jail. That's just the obvious stuff, you know. Um, you can get the obvious stuff right and then get the not so obvious stuff wrong and it undoes all your hard work. Maybe you've been stuck on the wrong mortgage product for the last five years and it's cost you um, money equivalent to your next deposit. That can happen. 
perhaps you've got everything right up until this point, you get the wrong tax advice and you pay 20% uh, more tax and that's equal to doubling your portfolio over the next 10, 10 years. Um, that's before you even think about growing a portfolio, that's just looking after what you've already got. Growing a portfolio, finding, fixing and renting, you're already getting the idea that it's a it's a complicated process and um, I think the point's threefold. I think you need a managing agent, I think you need a managing agent that can help you can grow, um, to teach and inspire you to grow maybe, and I think you need a managing agent who can introduce you to a wider team of accountants, solicitor, tax advisors, mortgage brokers, those kind of people. I think you need a great letting agent. Um, there might have been an ulterior motive in this video series after all. I'm not sat here all smug. Uh, all of those things I'm talking about there, I'm, I'm talking from experience. Um, in the past, I rented properties to people with bad credit. Uh, I've rented properties to unbeknown to me to drug dealers. Um, I've rented properties without a property inventory and then wondered why I couldn't get my deposit back. Um, I've registered deposits late. Uh, I've set up standing orders and failed to check that they were on, uh, on time. Um, I am, personally, um, I think I'm like you. I'm a landlord and I'm not a very good letting agent. Uh, in order to have a well-run property portfolio, I needed to employ, at the bare minimum, six people. Uh, that is now a growing number under six departments and they all look after a very specific corner of the business and without them I'd be totally lost. I wouldn't even attempt to do this by myself. Uh, I have attempted to do this by myself and uh, I got in a bit of a mess. I've got to say that at the time when I was attempting to do it by myself I did not realise I was in a mess. I was running another business alongside, um, you call that my day job. At the time I employed dozens and dozens of people and we did a pretty good job in that business. So, you know, I could, I could definitely um, manage renting out a few little properties, couldn't I? Um, no, I couldn't. I made a, um, a, a bit of a mess of it. It was easily sorted out by the professionals, you know. Get the professionals in, set up a business around it, and uh, you know, three to six months later, all those things are settled down. The one thing I know is most landlords, they don't know what they don't know. It's true of anybody, of course, but landlords, aren't generally teachable. I know I wasn't. I know if somebody had asked me back then at that time, how are you doing it? I'd have talked all day long about how good I was at, at, at renting these properties out. And in reality, I wasn't very good at all. So that's definitely worth knowing. Uh, yeah, my, my sincere advice to you is get some help. Um, don't think about doing this all by yourself. I think that's enough for today. Uh, my next video, we're talking about putting it all together. I've covered find fix, rent, and I promised you a section on repeat. That is taking your one capital pot, putting it into a property, renovating, renting, refinancing, repeating, and keeping buying multiple properties from one capital pot, building your empire. So we'll cover that next, stay tuned.